to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 16th, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. Lots of emotion in the building. Most of it directed directly at Isaiah Pacheco's situation. Oh, too soon. Too soon. What, do you think we weren't going to talk about I it? I was hoping. I was hoping we got through this show and... Uh, I just ignored it? Yeah. I'm not ready to... <laughs> I'm in denial right now. Really? Yeah, that's what stage is that? Uh, it's a river. Grief? Yeah, I mean it's um Swish Bust. <laughs> oh dang. That's so much out. No, I mean it uh is part of the news today. We got a lot yeah. of I mean injuries have been a storyline in fantasy football. We got reactions to the weekend, studs and duds, and a whole lot more. How are you doing today, Mike? Are you somewhat rejuvenated? Uh thanks to Marvin Harrison. Uh my pants will never recover. From, uh, I don't, from I don't what just happened. Put Wait. it that way. I'm never going back to the pants store. They flew off? <laughs> they did not fly off, man. They they evaporated. Yeah, the, dude, the beginning of that game, Marvin Harrison <laughs> just going full nuclear in the first half, multiple touchdowns, 130 yards, dominant, like, like unbelievable hands, great speed. Should have had four touchdowns. I feel like. like- Re- realistically should have had four but yeah that was fantastic uh overall the teams are huh, uh. it feels like this weekend did a very good job of reinforcing the messaging on last week's show of don't freak out don't overreact like those that lost their minds about marv all is well in the world those that lost their minds about isaiah likely he came back to earth uh, we had kind of those that thought Anthony Richardson was the second coming, got a harsh reality in Green Bay. Like there was balance to the force, I guess you could say, in week two. A bunch of injuries as well. And we like to react with you each and every Monday morning, your reactions to the weekend mm-hmm. on the most sophisticated segment of the show, Monday Punday. We'll start with the good, Mike. Uh Brock Powers. Pow, pow. Oh, yeah. And Devon A. Champ. <laughs> Chris Godson. Chris Godson. Yeah. Malik Yabers. Oh, how about J.K. Dubbins? All right, or Brees. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, it was nice. Balance to the force to see Calvin Ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, speaking of the force, Marvelous Harrison Jr. Alvin Camaro? Alvin Camaro. Should, we're, be more like Alvin Ferrari. We're, but. we're saying Camaro is good? <laughs> Darnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and Jackson Smith Winjigba. <laughs> I like that. But All also. Right. There was bad. Isaiah Pacheco. Ow. Oh, oh, and how about uh, Colby Barfinson? The cheese has gone bad. <laughs> Christian Dirt. <laughs> oh, I know this guy. Oh. Jamar Waste. Oh, you are taking that personally. Isaiah rarely. Yeah. How about Stank Dell? Oh. Or Jared Goffle. And uh, Brandon Ayuk. Oh, Sam La Poopy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amari Pooper. Oh, all right. And Patrick Mahomes. Oh, oh, no. Patrick oh. oh, no. <sighs> the, you know, the emotions were raw. I mean, there were a lot of injuries. We didn't touch on them all in the Monday Punday, but I mean, I think I saw Cooper Quarter Cup because uh, he had been, you know, got limited yeah. work. Um, so you were just saying, you know, order to the force. Some of the great performances came back down to life. Some of the bad performances bounced back. So how do you cope with double weeks of bad? Like Amari Pooper. Amari Cooper – uh, I yeah, you just tweeted out. He's yep. eighth in targets right now in the NFL. Yeah, he has 17 targets. And he's 84th in fantasy points. Yeah, that's bad. I mean, he dro- he's had two brutal drops on big plays. One was a touchdown. One was a big downfield play. And he's caught five of 17 targets. 
He looks checked out. He he does seem Amari Cooper as a player has always looked different to me. Like it doesn't it's not like Malik Neighbors. It's not you're not jumping off the line. Like it's always been precision. It's been, you know, he finds spots, he he's in and out of breaks well. And so it's hard for me to read that too because obviously he put himself in the position to be wide open for a couple of these big plays that he brutally dropped, but I think people are freaking out. Yeah, I mean, I it, it would be hard to start him. There are a couple players now where you go, man, can I, can I put, you know, Michael Pittman, can I put this player yeah. in my lineup even though they are the target leaders? You're just not sure that that's going to amount to enough to, to be a good fantasy play. If, if I have a target leader that's a downfield threat, I'm like Amari Cooper, I think, I think that's going to be okay. I really do. I, I think he'll be all right. Historically, Amari Cooper, and this is really incredible work he's done his entire career, uh, over and over and over and over, having good fantasy finishes at the end of the season, and every single season being the most hot and cold guy of all time, like half good, half bad. So I think he's just setting up a really strong finish. <laughs> yeah, and they won the ball game. I mean, you know, Deshaun Watson looked m markedly better. He did. He looked competent, which is – not something you could say of oh. Bryce. I mean, Bryce is Bryce oh. Young is he's Kyler Murray without any of the skill. <laughs> he's just small. Is that the comp? <laughs> just well, it's like it's like we don't. You know, you get the the height jokes around Kyler Murray all the time instead of celebrating the fact that he is like most NFL athletes are superhumans. And he's a normal sized person that does great things. But Bryce Young is normal sized and clearly normal. Normal. <laughs> like like it, it's just depressing. Bryce Young attempted No. Oh, this was next gen stats. No. He attempted only two passes over ten air yards despite trailing in every one of his dropbacks in the entire game. And uh he did not complete either of those throws. This is why you start him. This is why, if you're a Panthers fan, you make sure he starts 17 games this year. Because he's the oh, path to your next. He is the uh, path to a good quarterback. He's your path to what? I, I thought you were talking about fantasy players. No, like, no, 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 <laughs> no. I was talking about the Carolina Panthers. Oh, there's one you don't care about. <laughs> For you. Deontay Johnson, that's a player you can go ahead and two bad weeks probably does a season make. Yeah. Depressing. And I, I listened to Adam Thielen say that, you know, this was not a Bryce Young problem. But I don't know whose problem it you was. You sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> That's very kind of you, you sure Adam. You sure about that? <laughs> Adam's being nice to his quarterback. And look, I'm not. A ask him a couple years from now. He's Yeah, he, he wants to continue taking the paycheck and, and then moving on. It, it's incredible. It's incredible. And Jamar Chase, here's another one. Two straight weeks. Maybe that'll be something we talk about on the show tomorrow in a quick question, like players that have had two ups or two downs, but Jamar Chase, two down weeks, two under double digits, out there for 92% of snaps. Every time the ball's going downfield, I'm going, oh, this is the chase target. There's always some white guy underneath the ball at that point in time. Yeah, Mike Kosicki was just you know, at Hoover vacuum for targets uh, this past Sunday. Yeah, and targets to Irwin and targeting to I do, Yoshi Voss. And I, look, this is, it's really narrative. But if you watch the game, uh, Jamar Chase uh, lost. We'll just say he lost his cool there what? at the end of a game where yeah. he he thought or he he got up and he he had felt like he was either face masked or tackled by his helmet. The replay did not look anything like that, at least to me of the the couple angles I saw. But he got up, got the huge penalty that really screwed over the Bengals. But that penalty looked like a man who was just mad he yeah. was he was mad at his team he was big man they are they are not giving him the targets that he thinks that he should get so that one to me feels like a that's going to be the loudest squeaky wheel all week in practice and, and be like joe throw me the ball well and, and he did not get the contract he wanted right so um jamar chase has been you know, Brandon, I use Jamar Chase. Those have been tough players for people yeah. to put into their lineups. Yeah, yeah, I've been starting them. It's great. I Let's will say this for the for the Bengals. Three of their next four games is the Washington Commanders, the Carolina Panthers, and the New York Giants. That's how we get right, baby. That's an opportunity for sure. All right, let's talk about some offenses that have been surprisingly incredible.
Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. We're two weeks into the year, and we've had some drastic changes on offense. Now, I, I, I spoiler alert, the Bears will not be discussed in this segment. Oh, no. Um, the offensive changes for the Bears have yet to work. They're the... I believe they have the the lowest yards per atten- or yards per play, lowest yards per play in the NFL below Carolina. Yeah. yeah, part of my excitement of Ryan Grubb and bringing his offense to Seattle was not just Grubb; it was the removal of Shane Waldron, who I felt like was not a very good coordinator, who is now Caleb Williams' coordinator, and he's going to be the the new Arthur Smith of of discussions if something doesn't change. Now, I watched that game last night, the Houston game, and I came away saying. Caleb Williams couldn't have done a darn thing. I mean, he was pressured on 27 of 28 dropbacks. The defensive line was exploding through the offensive line on every play. I mean, could he have done more? Maybe. It's really tough. Like, this is not college. You, you When you scramble and chuck it downfield, uh, I believe one tweet said, there are men down there taking care of their families, and they're going <laughs> to intercept the football. Like, this is not college. Um, but let's talk about some offensive coordinators that have made – changes that are mind-blowing and we can't we oh, have to man. start yes with clint kubiak <laughs> in new orleans baby cubes who are they're two and oh they destroyed they Dallas. being the new orleans saints the dennis yeah. allen led new orleans saints my favorite i i'm i'm telling i i know people Sometimes might not know you gotta pop it out and show them people- <laughs> that's a direct quote from dennis allen People might not know how That's I. That's a direct quote. Oh, you, did you didn't see it. I didn't. I didn't have time to fire up that he video. He gave a locker room speech and ended it with, "By the way, there were some profanities mixed in. Sometimes you got to pop it out and show them." Oh man. Okay, Dennis. Yeah. So, uh, I I just want people to know. He. I am full blown rooting for the Saints. Like, <laughs> like. Let's remind people why. Yeah. So, um, at our live show in L.A., one of my bold predictions was that uh, they they were gonna on week five. Dennis Allen will be fired. It's mostly because I can't stand. Yeah, it's mostly because I can't stand the the persona of Dennis Allen, um, and I don't think he's a good coach by history. But holy moly, they are on fire! They, 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 and Clint Kubiak coming in has got this offense clicking. And at the live show, I made this announcement because I, I, you know, the the chance of the Saints being a great team is zero. Mm-hmm, I don't know. All right. And if they win ten games. I said I'm going to shave my head on the show. On the show. So and now I am full-blown rooting for a 10-win season because what a turn of events. And also it's just Did fun you to say have a turn of events. No, I said a turn of events. <laughs> they have the largest increase of any team in pre-snap motion, something you're going to see what? very common in the storylines of three teams that are 2 and 0 with new offensive coordinators. Clint Kubiak in New Orleans. Liam Cohen and Tampa Bay, who there was concern about losing yeah, there was. Dave Canales, and then Ryan Grubb in Seattle, 2-0. Um, both of their wins were closer, easier schedule, but they're getting it done, and they're, you know, those are the top three teams in the in terms of increase of pre-snap motion from last year to this year. So the new offensive coordinators coming in, the ones that were pursued, the ones that people wanted – they came in and they brought pre-snap motion to confuse it's, the defense. It's not just the pre-snap motion. It's also the Saints were dead last in play action. Like the there is this old way of thinking of you know the you got the run sets up the pass because the run sets up play action. No play action just more often than not play action works because is if you get the linebackers to just freeze for. A, a half of a second or float one direction because they have to you like oh, are they handing it off I'm not quite sure and then in the NFL that half a second that's that's what it takes to get open so for the Saints dead last in play action to number one 31st in pre snap motion to number one and we had we spent the off season talking about motion of just how are these people not figuring it out you go look at the top five offenses mm-hmm. in the NFL and what is a thread that goes between all five of them? And it's all five of those used a ton of pre-snap motion because it gives you an more, advantage, more information. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It's, it's so why directly. Why are we not doing this? It's like it's like one of the most directly correlative stats. And then you see some teams that just are boring like, and nah, stand there. We're not going to do it. It's like what are you doing? We don't need to do it. 
with all three teams, Tampa, Seattle, and New Orleans, there has been, with the pre-snap motion and the change in offense, an expanded role for a slot or a motion receiver. Yes. Rashid Shahid has been the beneficiary in New Orleans, leading all wide receivers in yards per route run. He is faster miles per hour wise than everybody in the entire national football league, except for Tyree kill in next gen stats. And you see it, they're going to take shots to Shahid every game, but if for some reason they keep targeting him and using him in the ways that they do right now, it's going to be more than just a deep threat. Jason start of the week, Chris Godwin, 34% of the snaps in the slot last year. Now 54% in week one, 76% in week two. Yeah, baby. Dominant performance for Chris Godwin this past weekend. And we saw a huge change in what we got out of Jackson Smith and Jigba in week two. Week one, it looked like more of the same. Week two, 16 targets. Yes. 16 targets, 12 for 117. That was the, the first thing I went and watched this morning because the NFL decided to bless us with 10 morning games. Unbelievable. And three afternoon games. What are we what are we doing here? What is the we plan with that? We have nine televisions in the NFL. <laughs> And we we had to have, nines like should be enough. So we that game wasn't on, and it, we just keep seeing the updates of like what is going on with JSN. The targets are out of control. So I went and watched him, and they just this was a very intentional effort to get JSN the ball. There's there was quite a few you know real short. They're getting him in motion, creating mismatches, getting the short stuff. But then they also went down the field to him. This was third highest air yards of any wide receiver this week. It, it's so it's I don't know what the true answer is yet for JSN, but for it for us to get to week two and have this event happen, a, po a possible year shifting event for JSN is very exciting. Certainly is, and it's the first time we've really. I mean, he's a currently a top ten receiver on the week, which is special. They won twenty three to twenty in New England. Miami, Detroit, and the Giants, the next three on the schedule for them. So we'll see one more tonight. Kellen Moore taking over in Philly, the Monday night football game. We saw Devontae Smith be the beneficiary of the expanded slot role. Tonight will be more interesting because there's no A.J. Brown. We got the news that he was going to be out with the hamstring injury. Shout out to Philadelphia. We appreciate that. Unless you're playing against A.J. Brown, you did not no, appreciate that. No, they got that. the word out but, early. But the, the bulk of fantasy players, we appreciate that. So, um... That's it for Ready to Roll. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nissan, and the all-new reimagined Nissan Kicks. Take your city, uh, take on your city and rain or shine with the bold new Nissan Kicks intelligent all-wheel drive. Head over to NissanUSA.com to learn more. Intelligent all-wheel drive cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. It's a bloodbath. Yeah. yeah, I I mean, Christian McCaffrey, injured reserve. Jason said that they set the pick on fire. I I don't know if I'd go that far, but it's close. I mean, we – The the McCaffrey fantasy draft pick? Yeah, I mean, I – Oh, that I, thing is – It's is, not on fire. It's it is com on fire. It, I mean, it's a complete waste for where you drafted it. Obviously, when Christian McCaffrey comes back, he's going to be very, very valuable. But you have – you you had the first pick in the draft, and you took someone that is not going to play for the first five weeks, and, no, that, and it could be far longer. Yeah, no, that, that that's all true. I guess I just meant, you know, the 49ers showed their weaknesses yesterday on offense without Christian McCaffrey. It all looked like, you know, sunshine and rainbows in week one with Jordan Mason filling in, and then yesterday against Minnesota, you saw some of the necessity of Christian McCaffrey. So if he gets back, Obviously, that's going to be a really big discussion for the fantasy community. What you do, those that have McCaffrey, do you try to get something for him? You know, I saw him hit trade. You know, he hit the trade block in both of our major leagues. So the 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 thing is, he's on IR. So that means the the best case scenario was three more games, right? And then he can come back. Except the reporting has been this is probably more like a six week. Uh, staycation on the IR for, for <laughs> you Christian You think he's McCaffrey. having a good time? So, which is, okay, let go six weeks. We're a ramp up period. I can't imagine that despite, if anyone could do it, it's Christian McCaffrey, but the team is trying to win a Super Bowl. I can't imagine his first week back is, all right, McCaffrey, you're back out there to 25 opportunities this week. 
So now you have that's seven. You're and you're going to play him, but that's seven weeks if if things go well. So it's just it's a it's an extremely difficult situation. I the, the way that I'm looking at it honestly is I, like I got McCaffrey in the league of record. You have him, Andy, in our dynasty league. Dynasty is a, is a much trickier situation because it's long term. But if you're in a a redraft, I'm looking at McCaffrey more of like he is of incredible value to the team that has Jordan Mason. I that's how I'm looking at it. Instead of I'm trying to get Jordan Mason because that's now that that window is as I think slammed shut unless you're going to really really pay for Jordan Mason. Even when you try to pay, you might not be able to do it. Exactly, and so I think that. <laughs> Said, I, said like a man with experience. I I think that I tried hard. It's it's more of a valuable thing of I don't getting getting McCaffrey over to the team that has Mason. If you if they have something expendable or, they can or, give you. Or you know, I mean obviously it depends on how the rest of your draft went. If your team is good, if you're winning, well, this yes. is this is great. Hold on to him. He's going to help take you over the top. Uh if your team is struggling and uh, you, you're you're out of running backs and, you know, then you've got to you've got to make a move cuz by the time we you know, nine comes around if that's when he's playable. If you know, if it goes that long, you're you're so close to the fantasy playoffs. That that's where I say you, it feels like you lit it on fire. Yeah, I and I again, I mean, it might be it might be three weeks from now. If the forty nine, you talk about winning a Super Bowl. If the forty niners are not winning ball games, it forces the issue more. Could be. So I think it's a little bit fluid. We don't have to make every decision today. It's just unfortunate that he hit IR. AJ Brown ruled out for Monday Night Football with the hamstring. This was Sunday morning. More impactful, Evan Ingram, a uh, hamstring injury in pregame warmups was a last minute um uh, inactive. inactive. And and what was most difficult, and this is why we always recommend you have leagues that you run waivers every day, uh, except for Tuesday. But on Sunday, if you're playing on Sleeper or other platforms, make sure it goes from running waivers at nine o'clock to open free agency just for Sunday because yeah. if this news came after the waivers would have run and so there were teams in leagues that you didn't even have the option to pick up a tight end to play or you were stuck with a backup tight end in Atlanta on Monday morning um, whose name I just learned so <laughs> more injury news uh, we'll get to it in just a second let's take a quick break so um Al, I don't know if you can find us. Um, maybe we'll go here. Chiefs running back Isaiah Pacheco suffered a fractured Three. fibula late in the game against the Bengals. MRI to further evaluate. He's going to land on IR. Yeah. So that sucks. Uh, Jason, my, my guy is a double hurt for me because he's one of my my guys and. Also, he's in my league of record. And it's he, almost like you would draft the players you believe in. Yeah, he was dominating. For I mean, he, the volume was so incredible for Pacheco. Yeah, he was. He was definitely their workhorse. He was their passing downs, yeah. their short yardage. He was everything I hoped he was until he was injured. Um, get he Car Carson Steele, Samaj P. Ryan, eventually Clyde after his IR stint potentially. Yep. Honestly. People want us to just tell you who to sign. I, I'm i not sure you're breaking the bank on any of those guys. If I had to pick one to put on my team for free, it'd be Carson Steele because I think he'll get the majority of the kind of work we care about. But I, I think Patrick Mahomes, I think the passing game, I think running through the air, I think Xavier Worthy, I think Rashi Rice. I, yeah, like that's I, it's going to be, be – It's going to be a committee. I would rather have the Pirine side. I mean, Carson Steele's a little bit more exciting as you know as an athlete and you hope that maybe he can develop into something special. Pirine won't develop into something special. But you do. I do think this team now is going to abandon the run, like for, for the most part. They're going to throw the ball a ton and run through the air. That'll be those little Pirine dump-offs uh, – for you know, if you're in a PPR half PPR, I think there'll be a lot of value there. I mean, Carson Steele is still marked as a fullback, I think. Yeah, yeah. at the that, NFL level, and looks position. like it when he runs. So, what a mess! Uh, Cooper Cup left the Cardinals game. Yeah, against uh, against the Cardinals. Yeah, that would make yep. sense. Mm -hmm. uh, he left the game against the Cardinals with a left ankle injury. Didn't return. Was in a walking boot. Absolutely brutal. 
for Matthew Stafford in this game and into the future. No Nakua. It's brutal for Kyron. Teams know will know how to play this team. Kyron was awful in this game, completely saved by a garbage time touchdown in it. Thank goodness for that. But they have no offensive line, and no. they have neither of their superstar wide receivers. I, I is their season like in peril at this it, point? It, it yes. is definitely in peril. Um, I trust McVay to try to figure it out, but I, I, he couldn't figure it out y yesterday. Tutu Atwell came in. We have Tyler Johnson. We have Demarcus Robinson. Whittington. We have Jordan, Jordan Whittington. Whittington. We have Colby Jack slash Colby Barfinson. Colby Jack squat. Yeah. It was – I mean, it, it was double brutal of the game script. If you didn't watch the game and you just see the final number, it was, it was a blowout immediately for the Arizona Cardinals. The second half of that game, if Cooper Cup had been healthy, the nasty – Disgusting guys, garbage points that would have flowed. Guys, he play they play San Francisco next week. They play Chicago in Chicago the week after. Those are two defenses <laughs> that you might like this the answer might not be to start any of those wide receivers well, for a couple of weeks. Well keep going. What's oh, but then they play Green Bay. <laughs> and then they play Las Vegas, who Ooh. whose defense is is very good. And the problem is going to be um is there a pass rush from San Francisco? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How about Chicago? Oh, yeah. Yeah, what about Green Bay? I mean, they, they're, yeah, they're going to put that. it on you. And then Max Crosby after that. Like, Matthew Stafford, survival is your is your goal at this Arizona point. Arizona has no pass rush. They have none. They are the worst pass rush, pass rush in the league. And they were they destroyed Stafford yesterday because he has no offensive line anymore. Stafford should go on to IR yes. with, nah, man. <laughs> He Protection. Was, yeah. He was sacked five times by a team with no pass rush yesterday. He was. It's not going to. He be was good. in an impossible situation. Jefferson left the game with a quad contusion. He is fine, according yeah. to what I'm seeing this morning. Yeah, they, they they came out and said day to day. So if you got a week, you're you should be all right for Justin Jefferson. Also, ooh, baby, that play. Oh my gosh, oh, the 97 yard Darnold. Yeah. Oh my gosh, um, Darnold, not the sacrificial baby no. when you have no one behind you to no. play. Maybe that's been the key. There's no, if you have no one behind you, he needed to know he's got job security. Maybe this sucked. Joe Mixon yeah. got tackled by a hip drop tackle. It's supposed to be illegal. No penalty have thrown. Have you guys seen no I one seen penalty one, no. called? I I haven't. I've seen so many illegal formation penalties. <laughs> yeah, there there have get been that out of the game, right? There have been five brutal hip drops in the first two weeks. Two of them led to ankle injuries, Jordan Addison, Joe Mixon now. He's going to get an MRI. He tried to come back in the game. This is so common for ankle injuries. Yep. Normally a player, they sprain their ankle, they go get it wrapped, they play on it or try to play on it. The wrap comes off, swell, 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 <laughs> swell, and you might miss time. So we're monitoring Joe Mixon, and guess what? That's Cam Akers at that point. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll have more information on the injury tomorrow on our waiver show. Amon Ross St. Brown, he left multiple times throughout the game. He did return. The initial report from Dan Campbell was positive. A contusion and cramping is what they're saying. That's exceptionally good news. We'll see. Dan Campbell's very forthright mm -hmm. in injury reports. He said he's all right. I don't think it's long term. Monitor it through the week. And Amon Ra is tough. Like all NFL players are tough, but this is a guy that I feel like he would play through a broken arm. He will spend the next seven days in one of those hyperbaric in one of those chambers, not moving. He'll do it for seven days. If if, if the doctor said if you do this, we'll you feed play? you, and then you'll be able to play. He would he would do that. Taysom Hill left early with a chest injury, yeah. taken to a local hospital for further evaluation. Have you guys heard anything else I've, about Taysom I have Hill? Not. We can try and find something. Tank Bigsby left the game with a shoulder injury, didn't return. It yeah, looked, that looked troubling. Bad. Yeah, it, it looked it looked really bad. I, I I I would not be surprised if a report comes out today that it is a significant injury. So Taysom did return home last night. Uh, he's scheduled for more imaging tests today. The team does believe the injury is not overly serious. So uh, there are some people reporting that the Tank Bigsby injury could have been a concussion. We'll monitor that for the week. Tajay Spears exited with an ankle injury. Oh boy. Um, Tony Pollard was already one of the better draft picks. Yeah, yeah. 
Marshawn Lloyd left with an ankle injury. Oh, my gosh, dude. Was that the injury he was dealing with already? It, I thought it was a hamstring. I thought it was a hamstring. Uh, I think there's a new one, which would be like his 17th injury since they drafted him this year. Great. Thankfully, he's not on the Saints. That was <laughs> today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Let's jump in. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Wee! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I Kyler Murray. Yeah, baby. This was... Perfection. It, it, re it really was. It was an amazing... He didn't even get to play a whole game. No, no. He came out with probably eight or nine minutes left. A perfect performance from Kyler Murray. Literally a perfect passer rating. He was the se He's the second player in NFL history with 250-plus passing yards, 50-plus rushing yards, and a perfect passer rating in a single game. And it Which, was, of course, the, yeah. the perfect passer rating, we all know it's that number that you cannot possibly forget of, 158.3. Right, right, right. Yeah. He just It's right there for everyone. Just that, flows. Yeah. Yeah, 158.3. And, and, Mike, what does it entail? What's uh, the definition of the passer rating? I'm sure that's also oh, as understandable as the number. It's a rating of the passer. Ah. Uh, we all know this. Yes, yes. But, look, it's better to have a perfect rating than not. Kyler looked amazing, and it was from the jump. The The initial throw to Marvin Harrison in the back of the end zone was one of the lowest probability touchdowns by next-gen stats in the entire NFL this year. The dude was drag – he, like, Michael Jackson scooted on his toes. He was he was already dragging his toes before he caught the ball. Brian Baldinger had a tweet talking about that play and inadvertently <laughs> said Fitzgerald yeah. in the middle of the breakdown because – because you see greatness in an Arizona Cardinal uniform. And his his comments after the game, Marvin Harrison, were the fact that Kyler only had four incompletions and all four were to Marvin Harrison. Therefore, he can do better. I will say this. Uh, if you <clears throat> if you didn't watch the game, there were two different goal line opportunities yes. Marvin Harrison had where it was so good to see. Both times, it was easy to recognize Marvin Harrison's left and one-on-one -on -one near the goal line. And both times, Kyler went right to him just like he should. Neither worked out. But I'm telling you, they're going to get that thing down. And it's just great to know that when you're down there, if you're going to go one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to go to him. Yeah, he is a physical force. No more commentary about his speed. He had a 60-yard touchdown where he supermaned into the end zone. And all is well in the world. And for the Cardinals, a few. for the Cardinals, it's a great sign. Like, Kyler is Mike's my guy. Um you know, I, I had traded Josh Allen in our dynasty league to pick up Kyler, and after one week, it was like, oh, no, like, are we going to be okay? But this was a this is a big performance, and it shows, the, it shows the potential of the Arizona offense when they're utilizing everybody. They scored 41 points and pulled him early. Detroit and Washington are up next, so should be two more good games. Yeah, yeah, Detroit, Washington. Uh, Derek Carr, he just ho-hum, efficiency master, I believe – this is still true that every possession that Derek Carr has led the team at quarterback this entire year has led in has led to points. I believe it's 15 consecutive drives. How long does this go have to go on before we believe what we are seeing? Like this, is, Derek Carr plays the Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons next. That should be that should yeah, be great. Pick, yeah. that should be after after the first two weeks. That's easy. I pick him up and I stream him in those matchups. But how? <laughs> Here's what's nice. How bought in are you? Kamara is a passing game monster. Olave is a star, even if his star isn't as bright as Shahid's right now. And Shahid is a big play machine. They have tight ends they can throw the football to. So when you talk about all of those pieces, it should keep working. Now teams are going to adjust. I mean, we we saw Tua Tungavailoa and Mike McDaniel come out, set the league on fire for half a year and teams adjusted to what they were doing, there's going to be a give and take, and I guarantee you there's going to be a Derek Carr historical remember-me type of game where he makes some mistakes. What do you think about him when you look at, like, Baker and how he's playing? Baker is balling out. Baker looks great. Baker right now is the number one uh, quarterback. In uh, fantasy. <laughs> yeah. And Derek Carr's number two? Correct. So we're living in the upside down? That is correct. Yes, we are. So, yeah, both of those guys need to be in contention for streamers streamers every week. And there are quarterbacks like Joe Burrow that are going to come up as, like, 
Am I just moving on? Am I just Burrow was Burrow, okay? Yeah, Burrow actually yeah. looked or like Jared he... Goff. I mean, Jared oh, yes. Goff. Jared yes. Goff. I mean, back to back. He does not take to that Dominator name. I'm removing it. it okay, just, no, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I think we, we might need to workshop changing it. Cause yeah, it's just, been a just Dominator. Back to, back to Garf. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he was so bad, and and he uh, honestly has looked not great. Like, didn't it's he not pass just... for 460 yards or something? Or did they have 460 yards on offense and yet somehow lost? I just, I'm pretty sure the I'm offense. I'm trying to search Garf. That's not his. I'm pretty sure his the, name. <laughs> the, no, it isn't. Um, <laughs> he had, I mean, he had 200 in week one, 307 yards. Yeah, that, that's the part that's crazy. Like, and should have been more interceptions. They he were had a number. Dropped. They were number one in total passes in week two. He threw the ball. Is this right? 56 times. I'm seeing 55, but you know. Okay, I'm looking on our our site. I'm gonna go with 55. Um, maybe one of their uh, did one of their backfield guys throw one pass? Uh, maybe. maybe. Yeah, so that's another discussion. We'll save it for the uh, duds. At running back, Alvin Kamara. It was Christmas all over again. Yeah, he feel free was to hit the drop if you got super it. Super Um, he he was unbelievable and could have scored another one. Derek Carr said, nah, yeah, this was, was mine. It was awesome. James Cook on Thursday night, Woo. incredible. Devon A. Chan as well on Thursday night. Brees Hall, Braylon Allen. Braylon Allen scored twice. Brees Hall was everything else. Yeah, I mean, it, it's you would think if Braylon Allen scored two touchdowns, you'd be really disappointed with whatever Brees did, but Brees was great. Eight targets, seven for 52, and a touchdown through the air in addition to the 14 for 62 on the ground. Now, nine touches for Braylon Allen, that is – you know, and they led to good things. That is something interesting to watch. Yeah, I think they'll c continue to have him involved, but obviously Brees is their – he's their main offensive weapon. They utilize him as such. Mike, J.K. Dobbins. Dude. The RB4 in back-to-back -back weeks. 17 carries, 131 and one. Uh, the, the, the receiving work wasn't there, unfortunately, this week. We had the one target. He – in this backfield, they're going to run a – well, how many times did Gus – Run. 18. Yeah. So Gus had more carries than Dobbins there, in each week. There is so much rushing to go around. But right now, J.K. Dobbins is the one who has juice to actually break a He's play. He's popping off the big yeah. play. They they he, ran it 17 and 18 times. Yeah. I mean, that, and, and that's what they're going to want to do going forward. I will say this. J.K. Dobbins, such a great steal. If you got him in your draft late, I hope you started him this week. You should have. Yeah. Yeah. I think he is a, an incredibly, like, he is a sell high. If you can find someone who believes he, that he is. You think Dobbins is? I think Dobbins is a sell high. Uh, I am I am worried about the Achilles history. You know, we saw Cam Akers come back quick and was really, really hot, got injured again. Interesting. Uh, and so I, I just worry whether it's going to last this long. Um, and as soon as it stops, you know, if, if he has one bad game, like, you know, they play Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's a week. tough defense. In, in Pittsburgh, if it's a bad game, I don't think you're going to get much for him. Right now, I think there's a chance you might have people really paying up for a, you know, a, a great, you know, what they think is like a great star running back. You I don't think 9.9 .9 per attempt is going to continue? <laughs> I do not. He's uh, – I'm kind of in the middle of what Jason's talking about. I think while he's healthy, it's going to be an incredible run. But if, if he does keep doing it, it would be – essentially the first time we've ever seen it. Carolina is a fun team to play. I'll tell you that. That helped. James Conner, Jordan Mason, Ramondre Stevenson, big game, Zach Charbonnet, David Montgomery, and Jameer Gibbs. How did Charbonnet? <laughs> Charbonnet's in this list because he caught it because he had a touchdown. Yes, he does he got, not he, look good. He no, does not. He does he, not. He uh he looks too big. He looks like he's too triangular. Yeah, I don't know, man. He 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 certainly looks slow. Uh, I'm thrilled he got that rushing touchdown, and he he is a a good receiving back, which is very very valuable for fantasy. Five targets, caught all five, and so in in PPR half PPR while Ken Bone is gone, I think that Charbonnet oh. is obviously a player that should be in your lineup. It's just unfortunate that you know he's going to get all the work, and you would want all the work to result in monstrous fantasy games, and I think you're going to get okay games. Why and how did Derrick Henry hit 84 rushing yards? <laughs> the, they changed some stuff over the second half of where they were having him run so that hopefully the, the team looks at that and says, oh, 
the the we got to get them outside the tackles and get the get the yeti going at full speed. They did lose. They did. They did. That was crazy. Man, those Raiders showed some heart. And honestly, like Devontae Adams was having the worst game. <laughs> I was I like yeah. we're 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 somewhere I think middle middle to late third quarter and I was like, "Guys, Devontae Adams has 24 yards." And then he just took over and was unbelievably good. 12 targets, 9 for 110 and a touchdown. A smooth criminal catch on the on yeah, the it was unbelievable, there. unbelievable. And then um, yeah, wide receiver Adams obviously had the big game. Marvin Harrison. I'm never going back to the yes. Marvin Harrison was four for 130 and two. Detroit and Washington coming up and uh, be excited. Mm -hmm. Be not afraid. <laughs> it's all going to be okay. Speaking of okay, Malik Neighbors had 18 <laughs> targets. Was ten for one seventy or uh, one twenty seven and a touchdown. Uh, was the start of the week for the show. And do you un do you know what percent of the passes that was for I, Malik? I, I believe like I do. It was in like, the forty percent. No, I know it was like sixty seven percent. Uh, so that's that's fun. Daniel Jones that's not sustainable. It, I mean, Daniel Jones though is doing the thing we say you should. Yeah. Do. When you when you don't have a chance, chuck it to the guy that is. Better than everybody else. Well, and they won the game. Oh, wait. wait. No, they didn't. <laughs> it was kind of Malik Neighbors' fault. It did. was. There was a there was a fourth down play <laughs> where the they were driving. Because was exhausted. Yeah, he had to be exhausted. It, it was that awesome, was like, though. That was an easy catch, and he dropped it on fourth down, and then the other team comes back. And Kyle, uh, their... correct me if I'm wrong, but at least the, the stat was this is the first team to ever score – Three, three touchdowns, three touchdowns, and lose to a team that did not score a touchdown. Correct in regulation. In yeah. Re yeah, yeah. Through two weeks, Malik Neighbors has the most receptions in the NFL, the third most yards in the most twenty-plus yard plays. He is a super stud. He is awesome. And if they're gonna feature him, I mean, they can't feature him like like this every game. But obviously, he is their focal point. This is every, why every he, week must start. He was a my guy because you didn't pay Marvin Harrison prices for Malik Neighbors. In fantasy, you had you had to pay up for Marvin Harrison, and Neighbors was going to give you the same stuff way later in the draft. Metcalf, welcome back. He was a buy low target last week, yep. which we talked about. Uh, I wish I had been able to pull it off in a couple of leagues. Ten for one twenty nine and a touchdown. Nico Collins doing Nico things. Yes, he um, is. Nico looks like. Nico looks like he's – yeah. I'm giving him that drop, too. He is too physical. I think he's competing for the the wide receiver one on the season. Like, he is unbelievably strong, yeah, he's, big, talented. He's not concerned about his target competition. No. No, which um, hopefully you cashed in on the Stephon Diggs sell opportunity in week one because uh, he's just not going to be a focal point of the offense. Oh boy, I would this of all the relief that I could have possibly had in week two, Calvin Ridley going off for four for seventy seven and a touchdown in the weirdest way possible, and then another touchdown on the ground. He was going against Sauce Gardner, so this matchup was going to be a tough one. But putting up a top ten performance on the week was woo. He had yeah. a big play, easy catch, drop ski, and then he comes back has an impossibly hard, you're never going to make this play catch, and he caught it to, for the a touchdown. The defenders stopped playing at the end of it because they're like, there's no way he could have caught that. Jefferson, 97-yard touchdown helps. Yeah. But uh, hopefully he's back out there. He looks good. Godwin, we talked about it, 7 for 117 and a touchdown. Uh, the, he was the man. I mean, Mike Evans had a down week for this team. Godwin had an incredible week. Jason Credit to you for bringing him up multiple times last week. Quentin Johnston, five for fifty-one and two. Here, here's the thing about <laughs> his performance. He is their big physical receiver. Mm -hmm. Like that is yeah. that is going to be valuable in this offense. From a, if you had to pick one guy to bet on, you want the guy that's going to maybe catch the ball in the red zone. So Quentin Johnston fits that profile. But this is a team that that ran the ball thirty-five times between their starting running backs. So. I don't think you're going to really have high volume totals for any receiver on this team without a touchdown. Like uh, McConkey last week scored. Cool, you're happy. This week, Quentin Johnston. 
Five for 51 is not special, but he scored twice. So if you have to bet on one, I'd still be betting on Quinton. It's just going to be a little bit tough with the way this offense wants to function. Pittsburgh and Kansas City are next for Quinton Johnston. The He'll be on the waiver show, and I'm okay with a speculative ad, but the, he will not be – he won't be at the top of yeah, my Yeah, it's like list. Alan Lazard in week one. Yeah. Do we know, was, wasn't was uh, Herbert injured in that game? He was. So, I mean, he, he left for a little bit. He came back, and then I saw there was a note about uh, x-rays were going to yeah, happen. I, I don't remember if it was but I haven't seen ankle any or, or I, I remember possible MCL. He came um, back in and, in, okay. and so played. So we're not worried? Came back in and played and ran. I mean, he had that big run after that injury. Okay. Uh, Rashid Shahid, four for 96 and a touchdown. We brought him up and ready to roll last week or this week and then Zay Flowers seven for 91 and a touchdown it was good to see but they got upset at home JSN we talked about it in Amon Ra 19 targets 19 targets despite coming off the field for a little while so Amon Ra all is restored balance to the fourth yes that has been the story George Kittle seven for 76 and a touchdown he's one of the very few like top tier tight ends that um gave you what you wanted I mean it was good to see, and he came off for a few minutes, got an IV. He was dealing with cramps. And Trey McBride might be the best of all the, you know, the top five tight end picks. You know, we were going through them. Kelsey looks scary right now. Sam Laporta looks a little scary with Jamison Williams breaking out. Dalton Kincaid's off to a slow start. Mark Andrews had the week one super scare. Trey McBride's you been just great. named four players with no touchdowns. Right, Trey McBride. Uh, who got a touchdown. Yeah, he did. Obviously, obviously, yeah, he did. If, if you didn't watch the game. Uh, Trey McBride, 6 for 67 through the air, uh, some incredible catches. He did. He got a touchdown because James Conner fumbled at the goal line and Trey McBride fell on the ball in the end zone. The touchdown, 100% fluky. Nothing to read into there, but 6 for 67. Again, in a game where Marvin Harrison did what he did, and then the fourth quarter was not needed by these players, so... Six for sixty-seven is is it warms my heart. I'll take that. Brock Bowers nine for ninety-eight. Yeah. Uh, he's too good. He is unbelievable. I mean, he Andy, you were asking, like, and he was could he be the best tight end in the NFL right now? The best and pass I, catching he could one. Be the he pass, could be. He could be the best pass catcher. Him and McBride and uh, pro, total tight end. Mike, you brought up Kittle's a better tight end. Um, Kelsey right now not doing a lot. You know, Andrews but the fact that he's two games into his career and and you can you can you can have that argument. He's he's not the best right now. No, he's it's not just the best. a fun talking point. But he, he, you can have an argument that is somewhat legitimate. I mean, he is he is exceptional. Most receptions for a rookie tight end through two games and he broke the record by three. So he had fifteen. The record was twelve. He's the tight end five and four in the first two career games. He was he was brought up as like the finalist for a my guy because it felt too scary to name a rookie tight end that. And uh -huh. that's what. But he was right. I mean, I almost did it. And and no, he is no touchdowns in the first two weeks and was top five in both. That's we have a Monday night game that could shift that. Part. That is the dream. You want yes. production that exists outside of having to score. And Gesicki had a huge game, seven for ninety one. He'll be a part of the waiver this show be, tomorrow. That's a did you bring up Hunter here. Henry? No. Hunter Henry. <laughs> eight for 109. Eight for 109. He had 109 yards. Well, hold on. Let me pull up Jacoby yeah. Brissett's line. Jacoby Brissett had 149 passing yards. Did you hear that, Andy? Let me let me say that again. Jacoby Brissett had 149 passing yards. And Hunter Henry had 109 receiving yards. Wow. He, <laughs> he, had, he had all of Seattle. <laughs> What are you doing, baby? I we know where the ball is going. It's yeah, going I mean, to Hunter they, Henry. They won. It's just funny. The, the tight, we have, hey, if we have a if we have a tight end funnel against Seattle, that would be delightful. The tight end position outside of the very top tier guys is so much a product of opportunity. Like Hunter Henry has always been capable of these type of games if you just threw him the ball a ton of times. Like if you had an offense that needed him. To be this, he could do it. Like it, there are guys like that in the NFL that just don't have as many chances. Which moving forward, I don't know how much I'll be on on Hunter Henry. He was no, he does if, this every year three times, and he was. It, it's a few weeks back, but it was those. Hey, look at the early schedule. Is there any tight ends? Sh should your draft plan go terrible? Who's someone who has two great games to start? 
was Hunter Henry. I got scared off by the week one because it was not great, but it was the, the matchup was there. The, the matchups are not going to be there for the Jets Hunter, and the 49ers. Hunter Henry last year. Just for oh, your, yeah. So you remember, yes. he was the number one tight end in week one, number two in week two. He skipped a whole bunch of games, and then the last two of his season, he was three and three. So he had three top so or he just, four he top just three. Bookends. Yeah, I mean, I, apparently. So. And, and to be clear, he didn't actually skip the season. He played. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. He, he, he played. Skipped, <laughs> skipped being good for fantasy. And, but he's always been capable. So let's take a break. Let's talk about some duds. All right, we're going to help uh, console you through some tough performances. Pooped in his big boy pants. All right, quarterbacks. Uh, we did not. We did not get any uh, touchdowns from Josh Allen. Yeah, Josh Allen. The the poopy pants almost feels like the poop was just seepage from the Miami Dolphins into Josh Allen's pants of. He didn't need to do anything. Just osmosis poop? Yeah. He, there was, this is not – I'm not concerned about Josh Allen. This was a, it was a devastatingly bad game by Miami. That, And then Cook had those huge explosive plays. Jared Goff had 55 pass attempts, 307 yards, but threw two picks. Man. A couple of them – one of them was not his fault, in my opinion. It was a clear legal contact on Jameson Williams, an anticipatory throw, nothing on Goff for that. The second one was really bad. And it was in the in the their side, you know, they were in their opponent's side, and it was a problem. But he also threw it to a defender one time where the defender dropped it. So there were, yeah, there was multiple should have been picks. Yeah, he he's concerning to me, and it's funny because he's got Arizona this next week in Arizona. That that seems like a a really good matchup. No pass rush, not a in great a, secondary in a dome. In a dome, and I'm like, I, I I'm I gotta I gotta press pause but is that wrong pause is an, is the right word like golf got i mean when you throw for 307 yards you know he's gonna he's gonna get into the end zone laporta hasn't scored uh, amon Ra, he should be healthy i i would press pause i wouldn't if you've been buried twice don't no need to go back and, and let him do it to well, you again andy just please don't make him a start of the week this week i won't okay good um, hopefully that wasn't implying that I did this. No, this week. was this was implying that Mike had him as yeah, week, week one. one did not I work. had him as week two. Don't I will not complete do it. the trifecta. It, sh it should work. It should work, though. <laughs> hey, guess what? Anthony hey. Richardson. Hey. The, how we doing, everybody? The orb. The orb that Andy looked into. It was still it was a little bit fuzzy, apparently. But yes. It was pretty close. It was pretty, pretty close. Pretty freaking close of the Green Bay Packers. Taking care of the Indianapolis Colts, where Malik Willis completed 12 passes for 122 yards with a touchdown. The facts that the that's the winning quarterback. Uh, yeah. The the fact that the Packers were able to just run the ball into infinity. And that, that was the recipe. I I know. I just I thought I thought Anthony Richardson could do enough. Uh, it, where the, we know what the Packers are going to do. Uh, you don't know what the Colts are going to do. They could surprise you with with some things, but it was just a disaster. I had tremendous trust in the Packers coaching staff to prepare them at home against a player that I'm viewing as a rookie in the NFL who looked like a rookie in this game. Anthony Richardson made all the plays that a rookie makes, it, which means you have a couple good plays. You threw three interceptions. It could have been five. He Could also have been six. Fumbled the ball twice. So this was a you know only ran for thirty seven yards. Yeah, it was a really really bad game. Incompleted. You were negative for most of the game with his with his fantasy points. He he at the very end had a drive that helped you fantasy wise. Kind of, I mean he's a bust in total fantasy points, and you're lucky that he scored that many. Fifty percent completion rate. So we're two week two weeks in. You don't generally finish in the top twelve. If you can't get your completion percentage at at at, at least get it to fifty nine sixty percent, yeah, he's going to be an incredibly boom bust quarterback. And, yeah, what and are you feeling like after two weeks? You yeah, I have him. He's my league of record. Are uh, you just locking him in still? Or? No, 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 no. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, for instance, the next two weeks it's Chicago and Pittsburgh. Those oh, are unbelievable my. defenses. Those are like you know top six defenses. Is that a bench? That, well, it just depends on who you have. Like I've got Brock Purdy, and I yeah. think Brock Purdy is a nice, safe start if yeah. there's a better matchup than Baker. Um, 
The top two, Baker and Carr? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you need to have someone else on your roster if you've got Anthony Richardson so you could try to play the right matchups. Patrick Mahomes, two picks. Not a big fantasy day. Again, continuing the rhythm of last year, although this would be your buy opportunity, yeah. in my opinion. Atlanta, it, Los right. Angeles on the road the next two weeks. Those are not going to be easy. It should. It it should be a buy low moment for Patrick Mahomes. We had a but we had a buy low moment last year. And you just kept waiting. And you just kept waiting. When is Mahomes going to do Mahomesian things? And the, the second half was a disaster for fantasy for Mahomes. So are they just what the Because I agree that this this is the moment that you could go get Mahomes and things could turn around. But what is your real confidence? in that actually happening like it's been it's it's been a while for Mahomes for fantasy purposes yeah I mean losing Pacheco hurts the offense as a whole right but it certainly means that he's going to be passing it a ton he's going to be dropping back a lot I do think they have better weapons than they've had you know Rushy Rice is legit had some downfield action uh Xavier Worthy has speed that can break things open at every play I I'm starting to feel the opposite of that the opposite of what that they have better weapons. Oh, than last year? I'm yeah, because if if Kelsey has taken a significant step back he's, athletically, he's not a part of the offense, and right isn't now. a part of the offense. You tell me that you draft Xavier Worthy and then you lose Kelsey, for all intents and purposes in the offense, and you lose Pacheco, who's a pass catching weapon. All of a sudden, you're like Xavier Worthy was used this past weekend to take end around screens for the game. Like Rashi Rice is an awesome player, but he is not Tyree Kill. Or AJ Brown, like yeah, I do not think he has. And then Hollywood's gone. I'm certainly not. I don't think he's got better weapons I'm right now. I'm certainly not saying he's got better weapons than the old days of the Tyreek and Kelsey. But last year, the MVS and Sky Moore, and I, I do think these are better weapons. And I don't think Kelsey is. I don't know why they're not using him that much. Um, you know, I I don't. He was wide open in the back of the end zone on a play. He still finds the right spots. So I would rather have Kelsey than, you know. Xavier Worthy in yeah, the offense. Sure. And so just a reminder of, of last year, Kelsey was above – let me make sure which scoring format I am. I'm in a, a four-point passing touchdown. He was over 20 points four times. Mahomes. He, Mahomes was. He was a top five quarterback two times. He had one – all right, I'm Explosive out. Explosive game. I'm not doing the buy buy low. I'm just it's, I'm playing it neutral. I'm playing I, it even. I don't I, like. I don't think it's a bad in, investment in, in a in action you could take with your team that could turn into a huge uh, windfall for your fantasy team. But it it is. I I think it's a little sketchy. Losing Pacheco does not help them. No, he it may doesn't. have to throw it five more times, but he may get sacked five more times. Like they 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 should go get somebody. At running back. Leonard I mean, Fournette's out there, right? Yeah. I mean, Leonard, I like Forn the, Leonard Fournette would help this team tremendously. I think they – I mean, Samaj P. Ryan is their Leonard Fournette. They chose him over well, but, Leonard. Yeah, but that's because he was going to come in and play a third a down role. Not yet. Yeah. I mean, I would not be shocked if you heard some names getting worked out in Kansas City uh, because Carson Steele, the fullback, is not an answer. People worried about Dak. Should they be worried about Dak? I, I don't think they should be worried about Dak. Obviously, week one, it, it was it was ironic because, you know, they had two blowouts. They were This just, is what they did last year, too. One, one was a win, one was a loss. Uh, you know, against Baltimore this next week, um, at home, I, I think it'll be fine. I'm, I'm not worried about Dak. C.J. Stroud, uh, they won the ball game, but from a fantasy perspective, C.J. Stroud was middle of the pack. Watching that game yesterday, and I, I messaged in Slack, so I want to get your guys' Just what did you think of the game? Cause, and it's all anecdotal, but just, I was watching this game going, man, Caleb Williams is not getting anything done. I know he's under duress all the time, but even when he's seemingly not, it didn't feel like Caleb Williams was playing a very good game. And I'm like, C.J. Stroud, he looks fantastic. And it was 16-10. to 10. Like That's this, a good defense. That's what it does. A but good it, defense. But I'm saying I felt like Stroud was playing well, and they still weren't putting up points, so it was – just this strange situation yeah. of a, of a game a one score game thinking one quarterback is playing terribly and the other one's playing great but it's just a one score game Wild. running back duds Rashad White had five receiving yards in this oh. game he <laughs> went out injured 
I made him my parte parlay, <laughs> and it was the least receiving yards he's had in t- his last 20 games. 20 games. And so that was crazy. Um, he he did have a, a groin injury scare. Ah! During the, he did go back he in the game. He was a huge bust in this game. He did go back in the game. But opportunity-wise, where are you at, Andy? Because oh, oh, you were the most – Rashad White will still get everything. Is that is that confidence still strong, or is it wavering? I mean, it, this was a game that he was shut down by a run defense we know is dominant. So, you know, it, they won the ball game. Seven carries for Bucky Irving for 22. That's not special. 10 for 18 for Rashad White. That's even worse. And one target to the running back. This is just an outlier game. Okay. Um, not an outlier is the putrid, mm-hmm. abysmal, Dude. incredibly... <laughs> Ugly performances of DeAndre Swift. And let me tell you something. It's so bad. I went into last night basically in our league of record, heads up, Mixon versus DeAndre Swift. I lost Mixon in the game with two quarters of Swift left, basically, a quarter and a half. I all but was positive. It's over. Couple dump offs in garbage time. Uh, it wasn't over. 14 for 18 for DeAndre Swift. The offensive line is not playing favorites when it comes to who it doesn't open holes for or protect. Well, if you look at Swift and his value last year, it was he was running right. through wide yeah. open holes. He had the the most like yes, yards before fast. contact, and he's very fast. He is not very good. He's not very strong either. And this, I mean, every single time they handed him the ball, it was basically wasting a play. It was like, okay, we're gonna delete first and ten. We're gonna, but often making second down even further back. Twenty four right. for forty eight on the year. Yeah, two yards a carry. You, I mean, you got to start. I, oh, I, I honestly, I, I honestly think that they would be better off handing the ball to Khalil Herbert. You're darn right. Can, they would. They, he some, looked a little bit better. He is better. He's just a better. Those are the worst when you have a guy in your team, but then you feel like you got to add somebody in free agency because you got a ton of money. Mm-hmm. You go and you do it. And then you're stuck playing the player you don't believe in. Betsy on the Dynasty podcast called, uh, you know, before the season, he said DeAndre Swift was going to be this year's Miles Sanders. Oh, it feels exactly like that. You go out, you get the bag, you you have the team uh, give you money right away. Like they went after. Yeah, him, they did. And they're, but there's just they're just not very good. That is a red alert for DeAndre because they will bring, like they will bring other players in. They're going to start to compliment him more. You saw more of. Herbert last night than the day before. Yeah, Chuba ended up, you know, taking over as the season went along because he was better than Miles Sanders. Uh, Zach Moss and Chase Brown are still not going to help your fantasy team. It, Zach Moss was 80% of the snaps. It was, again. You can play him against Washington next week? Yes. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. He Zach Moss is still the leader. Zeke and Dowdle both uh, basically uh, split snaps and also left early. Dowdle yeah. started. Yeah, was, Dowdle started the game. Deuce Vaughn got involved. I mean, he wasn't – he didn't get a bunch of opportunities, but he was taking snaps. And then Zeke came in. Uh, it's a – if if Deuce Vaughn is really part of the plan, this is just – this is an absolute disaster of of whoever gets the rushing touchdown that week, it's fine. This it, is why I'm not concerned about Dak. It's sure. Because they, they're going to throw they the ball. They can't run. Why did Jerome Ford get seven carries no and, De- and Deontay Foreman get 14 when Ford was seven for 64? Well, Ford Ford had a, a, a huge run that juiced up those numbers, but Deontay Foreman was – he had more carries. He uh, Maybe they just prefer Deontay Foreman now. This is a – this is like a, a, a red alert. Cause Jerome, for you it is? Yeah, because Jerome Ford's entire fantasy purpose for us was he was the entire workload for the Cleveland Browns. If you can't be sure that's going to happen – then he is a very sketchy play. There are a lot of running back names that were sketchy moving forward yeah. in that group. Yeah, I mean, especially considering you don't project Jerome Ford to have the goal line opportunities. If if he's not, you know, starting the game, if it's Foreman, that, that's tough. We're running pretty long here on today's episode, so I want to read you some wide receiver duds, and I want you to tell me worried, not worried, okay? Let's right. play some worried, not worried. Jamar Chase. Not no. worried. Garrett Wilson. Worried. Annoyed. <laughs> okay. I don't think I don't think that, he's that dude. He uh, did have a couple plays in the game that were really good, but yeah, maybe you're right. Mike Evans. Worried, you, you, not worried. Oh, just real quick. That would mean 
that was Legereus Sneed. We yep. seventy six percent of the routes that Wilson ran, he was covered by Sneed. We knew this was a possibility. So I'm not Keith, worried. I'm not in worried yet. I'm just annoyed. Mike Evans, not worried. No. Nope. Mm. DJ Moore. Yeah. Worried. He was so frustrated. He was he was he, he, he seemed was like he was mad. frustrated at Caleb. Yes. So that that's that's the the concern is not with DJ Moore, the player. The concern is with the Bears offense and rookie quarterbacks looking like rookie quarterbacks. The number one name that uh, people submitted for Monday Punday was Tank Dell by far. When I was going through the the submissions, we had Stank Dell. Um, we had st a lot of different names. Yeah, yeah even ones that Jason made up. <laughs> and one for negative three through the air in this game. He had four targets, um, which you 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 would want to see more. This is obviously good defense. One of those targets was, man, he uh, probably a fifty yard touchdown down the seam if he catches the ball and he dropped it. So that was really uh, really upsetting. George Pickens against Sertan, not worried. Nope. Brandon Ayuk, 4 for 43. I am going to go not worried. I'm going to say I am annoyed. Uh, Brock Purdy has not looked great. I know he had, he had 300 yards and a passing touchdown. He did not look good to me. He, that's, they were trailing like the whole game, so that's, why he, that's how he got to the 300 yards. But – I, I think that that will balance out and they'll be okay. Worried, not worried. Um, I'm. I, I think it'll. I think it'll take a couple more weeks. So I'm not worried long term. And then the veterans who are number one targets but have been disappointing. Amari Cooper, worried, not worried. Uh, I, I am worried. A little worried. Michael Pittman, super very, worried. Very worried. Terry McLaurin, very worried. Yeah, super worried. Cor Cortland Sutton. I mean, Cortland Sutton, Terry McLaurin, Michael Pittman, and Amari Cooper, they're number ones for bad offenses, and it's not working out. Would you rather I, – I feel like I would rather have number twos for, you know, great offenses than number ones for bad offenses. So I, I guess categorizing Cleveland as a bad offense, is that where you're at right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess they are – they're they're more middle of the pack. They aren't straight up bad, but – um he'll have good games. We talked about him earlier. He'll have good games this season. He is earning the targets, but he's not doing anything with the but, The week against the Giants coming up, that's going to be a huge moment. Litmus test? Yeah, huge moment for the Browns and Amari Cooper. If, if Cooper comes out and has another 40 yards or whatever, I will be at red alert. 40 would be great. He had, th he had 11 <laughs> this week. I'm saying, I'm saying if you only get to 40 against the Giants, that's that ain't it. Lad McConkey, two for twenty six. I don't think you're going to be able to start Lad McConkey this year. Oh, I definitely think you'll be able to start Lad McConkey this year. I mean, I wasn't. I told everyone to not start him this game, anyways. I don't think you're ever going to be able to start him. Yeah, where are you? Pittsburgh, Kansas City. He's only he only played 40, 49 percent of snaps. He's, I just like his yardage. I mean, you got thirty nine and twenty six yards. I just don't think. I don't think he's ever going to factor into this offense to any sort of focal point. Yeah, he, he'll end the year as their number one target. What does that mean? Right. That means that you'll have plenty of times that you can start him. I, I mean, Carolina, we knew that this was going to happen. We talked about it before. I know I know. Quentin got two touchdowns in this game because he just was found wide open in the end zone. But it was like this was the prescription the whole time. They're, they're going to be up so much. They're going to run the ball 17 and, and 18 carries for the for two different running backs. You were never going to pass the ball much. You, you, he doesn't – you know, you don't even need to be on the field or, or – throwing the ball so that's what happens against Carolina over and over and over I, yeah I mean they didn't throw it against Las Vegas either yeah it, it's just a matter of what the game script is going to be if you think they're going up against a team that's going to put a lot of points on them then I'm fine starting McConkie if you think they're going up against a team where it's going to be a low scoring run both teams then bench them that's Christian, how I view it Christian Kirk one for negative one yeah that we, we disagree red. on the wide receivers in Los Angeles Christian Kirk is a he's red done alert. I like I I thought after he he wasn't a, a you know advise you play Christian Kirk but it's keep your eye on it because with Evan Engram out Christian Kirk should be able to establish more of a role in that area since him and Engram play you, you know complementary roles of actually not com the similar roles so the fact that that's what we got is he's uh he he managed to rough. be worse than week one by a lot and week one he had one catch um. <laughs> Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta, Mark Andrews. Andrews was four for 51. Yeah. I wouldn't put that I'm in not, the dud category. I'm not worried about Andrews. He was 27 of the 37 
Lamar he also drop got back. missed on a monster yes. like mm-hmm. potential touchdown. So look, I ran more routes than Isaiah likely. Don't want to turn. I don't want this to turn into just we're apologizing for Mark Andrews every single week. But two weeks in, this seems to have corrected itself. Kelsey is that one is absolutely baffling. Of you, you, you they just they fixed his contract right. Like they mm-hmm. did something with his contract. They did of getting him more money and he he is as as of right now not it's not it's not that he's not the focal point it's that he's barely involved in the offense during the second half of last year when he was much much worse than his fire start he was playing 67 60 percent of snaps 71 percent of snaps he played 91 percent of the snaps in this game it's very strange Dalton Kincaid, four for thirty-three on Thursday night football. That's, that's part of the the Bills thing. The, the fact C- that he came got, out with his head, need. yeah, and he got he got two passes early. This was they were going to start getting him going. This was that game goes in the garbage for me. We'll watch Kyle Pitts tonight and see what he can do. Dallas Goddard on the field without AJ Brown tonight. I know you guys are in a match. Dallas Goddard under four points. Everybody. Dallas Goddard over four points. Everybody. <laughs> Choose your side. <laughs> Waiver wire episode tomorrow, streaming quarterback options tomorrow. Please check out the website, jointhefoot.com. Get in on the ultimate dashboard. Get your lineup set up each and every week. We've got some really cool tools in there, jointhefoot.com. We will talk to you tomorrow. Enjoy the game tonight. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.